In math as usual. While these analogies and this strange equation may be one way we humans try to understand God, for me, they miss the point. You see, each tries to compare God to a thing, an inanimate object. And God is not a what. God is a who. A living, loving, creating, redeeming, very much relational God. I would like to read to you again the text for today, but this time from another version of the Bible, and this version is called the Message Bible. John 16. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't handle them now. But when the friend comes, the spirit of the truth, he will take you by the hand and guide you into all the truth that there is. He won't draw attention to himself, but will make sense out of what is to happen and what has happened. Indeed, out of all that I have done and said, he will honor me. He will take from me, and he will deliver it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine, too. That's why I've said that he will take from me and deliver it to you. As we look into this text, we don't see eggs or apples or even a math lesson. What we encounter is the fullness of God in the language of relationship, the language of mutual devotion, shared love that is expansive and generous. Jesus says that the Spirit is not coming to draw attention to the Spirit, but to honor Jesus and to speak that which Jesus speaks. And Jesus speaks and gives that which the Father speaks and gives. Because all that is the Father's is the Son's and the Spirit's. And all that is the Son's is the Spirit's and the Father's. And all that is the Spirit's is the Father's and the Son's. We hear this brief section of chapter 16 not as Jesus giving a sermon on the doctrine of the Trinity, but instead we witness the unity of the Trinity, that continually moving, interacting, loving, relational relationship that is within God. Eggs and apples and water and sunshine, and math. They all fall short, don't you think? Eugene Peterson writes in one of his books this, Our ancient Greek ancestors, theological ancestors, used the term perichoresis when they described the Holy Trinity. Perichoresis, it is a Greek term from ancient Greek, The front end of it, peri, means around, and choreo means dance. Because the relationship between the three persons of the Trinity has been described by our early ancestors as the eternal holy dance. One person dancing with the other two. What we see in the Trinity is the holy dance of creator and redeemer and advocate who are mutually affirming, mutually caring, and mutually loving. When you think back to our text, can you see the dance happening? As named and claimed children of God, we are invited to participate in that holy dance. Do you remember the first time you learned to dance? 
I grew up in a family that truly valued extended family. By the time I was 10, I had attended more family reunions, funerals, and weddings than all three of my children have in their lifetimes combined. And it was at these family weddings that I learned to dance. My father was a wonderful dancer. He loved to waltz, and his favorite waltz was the Tennessee waltz. It was my father who taught me to dance. I'm sure many of you learned from your mom or your dad how to dance as well. As a small child, your mom or dad would let you step on their feet and they would take you around the dance floor, carrying you into the dance. But that was not the way my dad taught me to dance. When the music of the waltz would begin, my dad would open his hand and I would gently lay my small hand in the palm of his. I would then rest my hand up on his shoulder or as far as I could reach, depending on the age that I was. Dad would gently place his other hand on the small of my back. There was no standing on my dad's feet. He expected me to fully participate in the dance. And then came the only instruction my dad ever gave me in learning to dance. He said this, Barbie, let me lead. And in all honesty, letting dad lead was actually pretty easy when I was a little child. My hand, his hand on my back would guide me, and it didn't even occur to me that I would go in a different direction. However, as I got older and a bit bigger and a little bit stronger, I fought his lead. This happened when I didn't pay attention to his hand on my back guiding me. Instead, I just figured I knew what the next move was going to be, and that's when I stumbled, tripping over his feet and mine. And that's when Dad would say again, Barbie, let me lead. And we would reset, and off we would go again. The more I trusted my dad's lead, the more life we were able to bring into the dance. As I got older, dad would twirl me out and bring me back in, all the while holding my hand in the palm of his. There aren't too many dances that I can dance, but that one I can. And there is one more dance that I am continually learning as well. The holy dance of the Trinity. My experience in learning to dance is not so unlike my experience participating in the dance of the Trinity. That relational dance where God's hand is guiding me. And at times, I fight that. And at times, I stumble. And God says, Barbie, let me lead. And we reset, and off we go again. Are you learning the dance? That mutual affirming, mutual caring, and mutual loving dance that has its very foundations in the fullness of God and is extended to each and every one of us the dance into which we are called to invite others. God, who in this dance really needed no other, did choose to create and to redeem a people. And not only that, he chose to create and to redeem each and every one of you and me and every child of God on this planet Earth so that we might join in this dance. We are called by God to see ourselves as God sees each and every one of us, like the three persons of the Trinity, truly, truly beloved. So I invite you to come and join the dance of Trinity. Amen.